Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that. And last time, we discussed the love of Jesus, and in particular, his love for the faithful. Today, the judgment of Jesus. People often think of judgment as a scary thing that ends with people getting hurt, but not all judgment is a form of condemnation, as we'll see. Let's begin with the example of the centurion that we talked about briefly in the last episode. He asked Jesus to heal his servant, and Jesus said he would come to heal him, at which point... And the centurion making answer said... Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man subject to authority, having under me soldiers. And I say to this, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. And Jesus, hearing this, marveled, and said to them that followed him, Amen, I say to you, I have not found so great faith in Israel. Matthew 8, 8-10 Jesus judges that the centurion's faith is greater than any that he's seen in the entire country, and this is far from the only case where he praises someone for their faith. By contrast, And when the Sabbath was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were in admiration at his doctrine, saying, How came this man by all these things? And what wisdom is this that is given to him, and such mighty works as are wrought by his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Jude, and Simon? Are not also his sisters here with us? And they were scandalized in regard of him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and in his own house, and among his own kindred. And he could not do any miracles there, only that he cured a few that were sick, laying his hands upon them. And he wondered because of their unbelief, and he went through the villages round about teaching. Mark 6, 2-6 Jesus had this judgment about the people of Galilee, the country he'd lived in for most of his life. Their lack of faith was considered remarkable by him, so only a few miracles were performed there. There were probably lots of people there who would have loved a miraculous cure but didn't have enough faith. Meanwhile, the centurion's servant was healed without Jesus even needing to visit. Jesus recognized and rewarded the virtue of faith when he saw it, but not people who were only pretending to be virtuous. We should try to do the same. There came to him a woman having an alabaster box of precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he was at table. And the disciples, seeing it, had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? And Jesus, knowing it, said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? for she hath wrought a good work upon me. Matthew 26, 7, 8, and 10 Jesus was in no hurry to nitpick when good things were being done, as long as the person was doing good for a good purpose and not out of pride or a desire for popularity, Jesus was happy to acknowledge the good they'd done publicly. We should never be afraid to point out when others do good things, especially selflessly. However, Jesus also pointed out that certain kinds of actions shouldn't be judged to be evil. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but what cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Matthew fifteen eleven. Like Jesus, we shouldn't judge people based on what they eat or drink, but on what they say and do. Eating pizza instead of spinach won't affect the state of your soul, but committing slander against someone else will. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus, answering, said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood hath not revealed it to thee, but my Father who is in heaven. Matthew sixteen, sixteen to 17 And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the ancients, and by the high priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he spoke the word openly, 
And Peter, taking him, began to rebuke him, who, turning around and seeing his disciples, threatened Peter, saying, Go behind me, Satan, because thou savorest not the things that are of God, but that are of men. Mark eight thirty one to 33 Of all the judgments of Jesus, these two verses represent probably the largest extremes, and both took place within a relatively short time and about the same person. Peter was referred to as blessed by God for identifying the divinity of Jesus, then shortly after denounced as Satan for trying to talk Jesus out of his mission of sacrifice. This shows how Jesus reacted to different behavior in different ways, praising those who accept the truths of God and rebuking those who tried to lead him astray. Even name-calling isn't going too far in that case. We should also treat people differently on the basis of what they do and say and how they act. And there came a certain poor widow, and she cast in two mites, which make a farthing. And calling his disciples together, he saith to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow hath cast in more than all they who have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want cast in all she had, even her whole living. Mark twelve forty two to 44 The final point about the judgment of Jesus is in how he recognized the value of a good act. All good acts are good, of course, but the act that's best is not the one that does the most good or prevents the most harm. It's the one that's hardest for the person making the sacrifice. Harder good deeds are more meritorious precisely because they're harder and more costly to do. Jesus recognizes the struggle that people go through in doing good for others, and like him, we should never assume that people who do more good are more good. Sometimes the smallest sacrifices can be worth the most. Next time, Jesus' compassion and service for those in need. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.